Well, howdy, YouTube family. It's Bold CRNA coming to you again with another day's topic. Today, we're going to be talking about do you need to take extra classes to get yourself ready for CRNA school? Should you take extra classes to boost your GPA? Should you take extra classes to show them that you're good at sciences? Should you take extra classes because the program requires you to take extra classes? Let's get into that today. Now here is my stance on it. You have a bachelor's of science in nursing. That bachelor's degree already has more credit hour requirements than the typical bachelor's program. It's already inflated. It's an inflated degree. It already has a lot of classes you take, more so than normal. So I do not feel like it's appropriate for programs to ask you to go back and take more classes on top of all the classes you took for that inflated BSN. The average bachelor's degree is 120 credit hours. The average BSN program is 126 to 109, 129 credit hours. So as you can see, we already take three or four extra classes on top of normal people's bachelor's degrees. Now, most BSN programs are modeled very, very similar to each other and have all pretty much the same curriculum. But let me identify the science courses that are very specific that CRNA programs are gonna be looking for and you should have taken to have graduated with your BSN. But some people slip through certain areas in the cracks here. So let me just identify these classes I expect with your BSN that you already took. You should have taken Biology 101 or 103 or whatever your program called it. It's essentially basic biology class introduction to biology you should have taken that you should have made an A in it you should have taken general chemistry or organic chemistry either one of those but you should have took the first version of at least one of those chemistry classes maybe both uh, but my program only required one so I took general chemistry 101 with a lab component Again, you should make an A in that. I made an A in that. So that these, these are all classes you should be making A's in if you're trying to go to CRNA school. Next class is microbiology. Kind of a difficult course, I'll admit that, uh, although I enjoyed it. And yep, make your A in that class. Next class, you should be taking Anatomy and Physiology 1, and then you should be taking Anatomy and Physiology 2. Now some programs break this up and they have like one course called Anatomy and then they have a whole nother course the next semester called Physiology. And so for whatever reason, they just split them into two different courses and there's still two classes that you take. Whereas most programs I feel like do Anatomy and Physiology 1 and Anatomy and Physiology 2. Uh, you should take both of those of course and you should make an A in them. And then of course you have all your other classes that you take with your BSN. But these are just your essential sciences that everyone should have if you're going to CRNA school. Now if for some reason you don't have these courses that I just listed, you should have had those courses and you should, and then I redact my statement that you shouldn't have to take anything extra on top of your BSN because for some reason you didn't take some core sciences that you should have taken. So you do need to go back and retake those classes I just mentioned if you have not taken some form of them because almost all, if not all, CRNA programs will look at those exact courses and look at your grades and figure out your cumulative science GPA to figure out if they're gonna let you into their program or even maybe uh, get offered an interview. Now there are some courses, some uh, CRNA programs that are requiring extra courses on top of those sciences and that's where I come in with a statement of I don't think that's appropriate, I feel like that's excessive and, and I honestly, going through CRNA school, would not have found these extra courses to have really helped me much in the program and be, been that necessary to have taken. Uh, so some programs want you to have a second chemistry. So they want you to have taken Gen Chem and they want you to take an organic chemistry. Some programs want you to take an, an organic chemistry and a, a organic chemistry number two. So like the advanced organic chemistry. Then there are other programs that want you to do that plus physics. Uh, so now if you take a formal physics course, that's a whole nother pretty advanced science. Now keep in mind, if your degree, if your undergrad degree was a biology or chemistry or physics degree, you should totally have taken all of these courses and it would make sense for you to have done that. What else would you have been doing for four years? But since you had a bachelor's of science in nursing, you took at least two solid years straight of structured nursing, healthcare, education courses with clinical rotation component. You were very busy taking all of these other classes. 
I don't feel like it's reasonable for you to have taken all of these pharmacology, um, health assessments, uh, medical surgical nursing courses, um, community health courses, uh, psychiatric nursing courses, obstetric nursing courses, pediatric nursing courses, all of these courses that you've taken throughout the two years in nursing school, they all have science included in them. They all are based off science concepts. They all include math and science and calculations and pharmacology and medication, all this stuff. So you've taken all of those courses already. To have you do all that on top of all the original sciences that you took in the first two years that I mentioned and then expect you to go back after you graduate and go back to school again and take more sciences just so you can apply for their program, I think that's excessive. Now, do I feel like if you do take those courses that it's gonna be harmful to you or a complete waste of your time? Of course not. Those are good sciences. They will give you good foundational information that will help you in CRNA school if you remember the concepts, of course, from the time you take the course to the time you start the program. Uh, they'll help because there are quite a bit of, of concepts of chemistry, biochemistry, organic chemistry, uh, there are physics concepts in CRNA school. There's lots of this stuff that you're gonna be thrown into and it's gonna be thrown in the mix with all your other anesthesia information and you're gonna be expected to kind of sink or swim very quickly. Uh, and you will have to take, we took an organic chemistry course, uh, graduate level organic chemistry in CRNA school. Uh, did I enjoy the information? No. Um, was it difficult? Yes. Um, do I feel like I could not have succeeded unless I took a whole other course in undergrad that was specific organic chemistry? No. So that's my feelings on those courses. But there is another side of this coin. I, like I said in the initial start of this, all, all these courses, micro, anatomy, physiology, um, biology, organic or chemistry 101, whatever, all these courses I said you should have made an A in. Um, you should make an A in these courses. If you did not, now in that sense, yeah, maybe you need to go back and retake them. Uh, if you made like one B and the rest were A's, you should be fine. If you've made a bunch of B's or they're all B's or even some of them are C's, you definitely need to go back and retake them because these are courses that your CRNA program are gonna be specifically looking at to see can this person handle hard sciences. You know, they're not, they're not gonna care as much about your nursing sciences. Uh, you know, they, they look at that as far as your cumulative GPA. So I'm not saying don't worry about those courses at all and just bomb them. They expect you to at least be able to keep B's and A's in those nursing courses, but those are not gonna be your specific foundational sciences that's gonna be mostly what CRNA school is gonna be built off of. They're gonna look back at your micro and A and P and these other courses to see how you do in that. So in that sense, yes. Retake those courses if you made bad grades. If you made decent grades, maybe you made a bunch of Bs and one or two As, and you just really wanna boost up your GPA, your overall GPA is like a 3.3 or 3.2, and you're concerned that they're not going to have faith in your academic abilities. Here's what I recommend you doing. Take pathophysiology, but take it at graduate level. You already have a bachelor's degree, which means you have the you have the ability to take a graduate level course. Take a graduate level pathophysiology course. Make an A in it. Do not sign up for a class if you do not feel like you can make an A, because they're specifically going to be looking at that pathophys course that you took, you know, this year or whatever when you're applying, and they're going to be looking at that grade and they're going to be seeing can this person handle graduate level science courses, especially pathophys, because that's a popular one for most students going into CRNA school because it gives you foundational knowledge that will help you out in CRNA school. And actually there are some CRNA programs that if you uh, took it at an accredited school or a school that they wanna take credits from, they will actually let you take that credit course uh, from that previous school you took before you started the program and, and kind of put it in place of taking their version of pathophys and you may not have to take pathophys in that program. Uh, I had two classmates that did that and they had our second semester of the program, they only had three classes they had to deal with instead of four like the rest of us had to deal with because they just they didn't have to take the pathophys course in CRNA school with us because they already had taken it and made an A in it. And a side note, at least at my program, 
Our pathophys was from a PhD biology um, professor. He was notoriously difficult. Everyone, you know, really um, respected him a lot because he was extremely smart, but he was very, very difficult. He also taught us our gross anatomy course, and he also taught us our anatomy and physiology one and two uh, in grad school. So he's very, very difficult. He taught a extremely complicated cellular level pathophys that was very much over most of our heads. And our two classmates who did not have to take the course said over and over to us as they were sitting next to us while we we're studying, like, man, I am so glad I took that class before we started this program because this is much harder than the version of it that we had to take. So I'm just telling you, CRNA school pathophys, it's no joke. All right, guys, that is everything. Let me know in the comments below if you guys had to take any classes or take extra classes to get into your CRNA program. Did you guys have to go back and take a biochemistry or, an, or a physics class to get into your CRNA program of choice? Let me know in the comments below. There were a couple programs that I thought about going to, but when I saw that they had those physics one and two and all these other requirements, and I said, you know, maybe that's not the program for me. Also, follow me over on Instagram, it's Bolt CRNA over there. You can click over in the community tab on my YouTube page and join the membership. A lot of people are coming in. I'm seeing new people. I'm connecting with you guys on a closer level. I love that membership option. So head over there and do that. You know, you get exclusive videos, live chat with me. Um, I mentor you pretty directly one-on-one -on -one about whatever topics you're needing help with and I try and help you achieve those goals. So the mentorship thing is awesome with the membership on this YouTube channel. Let me know if you have any questions and that's both out.